So let's say you just picked up the DJI Osmo Action 4 and you want to have the best possible image quality coming from this camera. Then you probably want to shoot your videos in D-Log M10 bit. So in today's video, we're looking at the Osmo Action 4 and how you can make the 4K footage look even better with custom settings and a few adjustments in your editing software. Now, most of the time you might be using a custom LUT, maybe your own custom LUT, or maybe you have a copy of my signature LUTs. But this video is mainly going to be about color correcting the D-Log M10 bit color profile from the Action 4, so no LUTs will be applied. And these changes can also be done in most editing softwares like Final Cut Pro, LumaFusion, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and so on. Now, the first thing I'm going to do uh, to set everything up is to go over to the settings tab on the Action 4, which is the two adjustment lines on the right side of the screen here. And once you pick this up, you're probably going to be in the basic settings so on the top right corner there is a pro button so when you tap on this button you will also get a few more options like exposure white balance and color so when we select the color here which is the first one we're going to change when we tap on this one time it will automatically go over to the d-log m10 bit color profile which is the one that we want to use now depending on what type of video you're shooting i would recommend setting the exposure to auto unless you're shooting a cinematic video which might require more camera controls but for this example we're just gonna use auto so when I'm out riding my bike if I dial in some some custom settings and there is a perfect sunny day and then suddenly there comes a cloud you know the scene is gonna change but the exposure and everything is still gonna be the same so if that happens the footage will most likely look worse but if you have this on auto the camera would automatically change that for you keeping an optimized exposure which is one of the reasons I always shoot with auto exposure when it comes to these action cameras. Now as for white balance we want to change this to manual. I find the auto white balance to be shifting or sort of pulsing too much between the different color temperatures which often happens when I'm in the forest or when I move the camera a lot so I prefer to keep this to manual. More precise 5500 Kelvin for outdoor shooting and 4200 Kelvin for indoor. Now, the next is field of view and this is more of a personal preference I would say and what type of videos you're shooting. So for motor vlogging for example I personally prefer the ultra wide 155 degree field of view for a wider shot and normal vlogging I prefer using the wide or dvor. Now the last adjustment we want to do is to adjust the sharpness and noise levels which is on the bottom left section here. Here I've set the sharpness to minus two and the noise reduction to minus one. This is because I prefer to add my own sharpening in post, which most of the times actually looks better than the sharpness coming from the camera. Now, noise reduction is also something you can adjust in post, but if you can apply it directly in camera, it will also save you a lot of time depending on your computer's performance. But just like sharpness, you don't want to apply too much noise reduction in camera because it will end up looking worse than if you did it in post. What I like to do is to actually just remove some of it and put it down to minus one or sometimes even remove it completely and put it down to minus two and do everything in post myself. But there's also a fine balance here in order to get the best possible image prior to color correction and grading. But as a starting point, we'll be color correcting a clip shot with sharpness set to minus two and noise reduction set to minus one. So now that we have everything dialed into the action four, the only thing we have to do now is to shoot some content. And when it comes to the color grading and correction part, it shouldn't take more than 20 to 30 seconds, depending on how much you want to tweak it. But this is the benefit of actually putting in the correct settings before you head out. And now the settings that we put into the action four, is settings that you can use for any type of scenario. The only thing I would mention though is if you're gonna shoot your videos in low light, you could also use the same settings as we dialed in now, but to get the best possible image quality in low light, you wanna go with the normal color profile because that's where you can enable the low light image enhancement feature, which is on the action for as well. But now I've already captured some uh, content. I went out with my motorcycle, so we can skip that part and let's head straight over to the computer and go through the different steps to make the action for footage look better. So moving over to Final Cut Pro here, what I also like to do is to use an adjustment layer, but you don't really have to do that. You can do 
it directly on the clip itself, but personally, I like to use an adjustment layer. So the first thing we're gonna do is to take a look at the waveform here, which is on the side, and we can see here the right side of the waveform is almost peaking, and that is gonna be the area right here on the right side of this building and the white part here. But one other thing as well is to go through your footage and see if there is any parts which are peaking more than others. But like I said, when we use the auto exposure, everything should most of the time be within the zero and 100 limit of the waveform. Now let's start by going over to the color inspector here. And what we're gonna use is the color wheels. So the only thing you have to do here basically is to just increase the saturation of the midtones and you can see how that affects the footage. So now with some adjustments to the midtones and the colors of the midtones, and if we just disable the adjustment layer and enable again, you can see how much of a difference that makes. And to be honest, this is everything you have to do. You don't really have to do anything else to make the 10-bit D-Log M color profile pop. But there is a few other steps as well, especially since we put the sharpness and noise uh, levels down to minus two and minus one, we could also add some sharpness but we're gonna do that a little bit later. Uh, we maybe want to add some more colors into this. So now we have the colors pop even more when we increase the colors of the shadows here. So this is before and this is after. And going through the footage here, it actually looks pretty nice. And I don't think we need to add any other adjustments either. Uh, we can see that the red color here might pop a little bit too much, uh, but that's also a personal preference if you want it to pop more uh, or less. But if we increase the color of the highlights as well, we can see this pop even more, but it adds more overall color to the image and all the highlights. So what we can do is to increase the uh, saturation and the colors of the highlights, but then we can go over here and we can select the hue slash saturation curves. And what we can do here is to use the hue versus saturation. And we can also use this pen tool here and just select the red color. And we can take the uh, red dot here and we can just push a little bit down, which will remove a lot of that red color if you think it's a little bit too oversaturated. So if we go back to the marker here now and do the same thing, you can see if we just drag this down, we have the red gone and we can increase the color of the red as well. So actually I want to keep it somewhat there. So now we're done with the color correction part of this image. This is before and this is after, and it actually looks a little bit more appealing. Maybe the reds are a little bit too saturated, but we can also go over to the color wheels and push the highlights a little bit down again. Now, if we look at the waveform, we can also see the peak of the right side of the white hair of the image. We can also drag that a little bit down just to make sure that it's not clipping in any parts of the video. And if we want more of that contrasted look, I see a lot of people, so now that I have my KTM Duke motorcycle, I see a lot of people, or I see a lot of videos of people riding a motorcycle. And um, I see a lot of people preferring a really contrasty look. So if you want that when you're out riding a bike or if you just want that in general, the only thing you have to do is basically take the midtones here and push down. So if you push the midtones down, you see that the image will get darker and you will add more contrast. But you can also push the shadows up and lift the shadows before you take the midtones down because if you do that, you're less likely to crush the shadows and you don't want the uh, bottom of the spikes here to go past zero or just above zero. So something like you're seeing right now and you don't want the highlights and the spikes on the top here to go above 100. So this is before and this is after. Now you can also add your custom LUT, like I said, uh, I'm gonna do that at the end, but there is one more thing I want to adjust as well. So like I said, we have put this down to negative two and negative one on the sharpness and noise. So I'm gonna go over to the effects panel here and just add sharpness. So put that over to the adjustment layer as well. And by default, this is set to 2.5, which I think is a little bit too much. So if we increase this, 
it's looking awful. So what I want to put this to is probably 0 0.8 or 9. And this is going to make it look much better. You can also experiment with this a little bit. It depends on how much color grading and color correction you do as well. Because the lower the midtones are and the lower the shadows and the higher the highlights are, you're going to add that sharpness by default by adjusting these settings. But you can also do that with the curves here. So if we go over to color curves and you can just place a dot here and you can drag the midtones a little bit down. And if you take the highlights and push a little bit up, you will create that uh, sharpness as well. I kind of gone a little bit away from the S curve because when I apply my custom signature LUTs, they already have that enhancement built into them. So uh, I don't really have to add any sharpness in post, maybe just a little bit like 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 and then add my signature lets and I'm basically good to go. So this is basically how simple and fast it is to color correct and add a grade to your action for a D-Log M 10 bit color profile. Now, like I said, you can also add your custom LUT. So I have my custom LUT here. If I just apply that on top here and just enable it, you can see the differences in the color pattern here. It makes the greens a little bit more orange, but not all orange. And it also sort of tweaks those different green tones and makes it look a little bit more appealing. So there you have one of the easiest ways that you can color correct and grade the footage coming from the Action 4 and the 10-bit D-Log M color profile. The settings that I showed you in this video is also my main settings, which I use every single time I'm out shooting with the Action 4. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like down below. And I'm curious to know whether or not you have the Action 4 or if you will be getting it. So with that said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And I will catch you guys in the next video.